Hi friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Rachel. Welcome to another weekly reading vlog. Guess who forgot to film an intro? That is right, your fave. Apologies on that. Don't wanna make this a habit, but I have done this my last two reading vlogs. Everybody makes mistakes and everybody has those days. In today's video, you are going to see me reading three books over the course of the last week with varying levels of success happiness star ratings and i had a really good time making this vlog so sit back relax hope you guys are having a wonderful day and let's get into the vlog hi friends so it is time for the first reading check-in for this week's vlog i am so excited i am coming to you only 58 pages into red rising but i have so many thoughts and i'm really really liking this book so far so i wanted to talk to you all before i got a little bit farther also please ignore this situation happening behind me this is like a giant piece of wood that I think Sean is like making it into a tabletop. I don't really know, but um, just ignore what's happening there. So I am loving Red Rising. Like I just, I have to say it. The writing instantly, I was just like, yep, yep, I'm in. I'm in for this, I'm fully in. I am so intrigued by this whole world, by all of these characters, by this crazy system. I, oh my God, I love it. I love a dystopian novel, you know? I had a feeling that I would really like this book, but I don't know if I thought I was gonna be so in love like this. Like I, I just, I'm really excited by it. So that is why I wanted to talk to you all before I get a little bit farther. So if you don't know what Red Rising is about, it is an adult dystopian novel. Our main character's name is Darrow and he is a red in this world. We have like a caste system happening. The golds are the highest, the upper echelon, the reds are the lowest. The reds are tasked with the job of trying to make Mars habitable for future generations. They are told that they are making this great sacrifice and their families will live on and everyone really appreciates what they're doing. And it's so important to the world that is to come what they are doing but everyone can see the writing on the wall the reds are treated terribly they are doing so much work and getting so much done for the golds for scraps you know for little things here and there they're barely making it by and darrow is really just trying to survive he is a hell diver he dives uh, below the surface for helium 3 which is helping to make mars habitable there's a lot of science things happening as this is a sci-fi novel i'm still like grasping all of that i could not give you like a powerpoint presentation presentation on that aspect of the book so far, but I'm still learning about that terraforming that has been mentioned many times. It's a new word for me. I'm kind of grasping. We're just trying to make Mars habitable and the reds are the ones forced to do that. They are enslaved. They live a really, really rough life and the golds don't care. There are also silvers, which they call tin pots, which are one step below the golds and they're kind of like the enforcers, I would say. They make life really hellish as well. Our main character, Darrow, he is a character that kind of just wants to get by. He doesn't want to make waves. Even though he sees that things are wrong, he just wants to feed his family and take care of them and just make things right and do the best that he can with the circumstances that life has given him. Well, his wife, Eo, who is this very outgoing, bubbly character, she is really uh, tired of the life that they have lived and she really wants Darrow to stand up and rebel. Particularly, she really wants him to because a lot of the people in the community respect him. He's very good at what he does and she thinks that his voice could be very strong to rise up against the golds. But Darrow is just very against this idea. There's a quote on page 34 and Darrow Darrow and Eo are talking about the idea of rising up against the golds. And the quote is from Darrow to Eo. He says, you say it's better to die on your feet. I say it's better to live on our knees. And so I think that that really amazing quote, there's been so many amazing quotes in this book so far, but I think that that's just a very powerful statement and shows the difference in kind of the thought process between Eo and Darrow. So as the book goes on, tragedy strikes in Darrow's life and he is kind of thrust into a whole new situation. I don't know like kind of what counts as a spoiler or not because what the back of the book says and then what is said on Goodreads, it's like very different. So I'm kind of gonna hold off from there, but essentially, I mean, Darrow kind of comes to realize that the Reds have been beyond just mistreated, they have been fooled. And so he kind of makes it his mission to defeat his enemies. I haven't even gotten to that part yet, but I know that that is where this book is going. I am really excited for that. I'm really excited to see where things go. There are so many characters in this book that are really interesting to me. Darrow as a character is very intriguing. And like, I just, I'm just, I'm so excited by this, you guys. I'm such a series girl, right? Like I love series. Give me a crazy long series over a standalone any day. And I just love starting a brand new series and being super excited about it. And just knowing you have so much story left to read. I did order the rest of the series on like page 30 while I was reading this. So hopefully, you know, things don't change. Hopefully I still love the book as it goes on. But I am just really excited about this book. I've seen so many people excited about the newest release. Um, is it Darkbringer? 
Iron God, one of those has gotta be it. So I have definitely felt inspired to pick this book up lately and I'm really, really glad that I did and I'm super excited that I'm vlogging it because I just think it's gonna be a really, really intriguing time. Maybe I'm a sci-fi girly. I feel like maybe I'm learning this about myself because I love Project Hail Mary. Obviously I won't shut up about it. I recently read The Martian, also five stars and this has sci-fi elements as well that I really like. Even though I'm a little confused by them at the moment, I'm still intrigued. I'm still excited about it. So 10 out of 10 loving this thus far. And yeah, I think that that's going to be it. So as I said, I haven't even gotten to the 100 page mark. So I definitely want to get farther into the book, get a little bit more into the meat of things before I check in with you all again. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to sit down, read a little bit more, and I will talk to you guys later with more thoughts on Red Rising. Hello, friends. So it is the next day and I have more Red Rising updates. I am over 50% of the way done with this book and so much has happened. That is one of the things that is really sticking out to me about this book thus far is I think back to when I last checked in and I was like, what, on page 50 something? I don't know, something like that. And so much had happened at that point and where our main character Dara was. He is literally in an entirely different situation now. A lot of time has passed. So many things have gone on and I just feel like I've gone on such a journey within this book thus far. And I am literally only halfway through and there's like, so many more books in this world and in the series. I don't know if the later books, like the most recent one, I don't know if that's still following Darrow. I know that this is like the Red Rising trilogy and then there are more books to come. But what I'm trying to say is just so much has already happened in halfway through the beginning of this saga, if you will. And I'm just, I don't know, I'm blown away. I'm like exhausted in the best way by reading this book because of what our main character has gone through. This book is sometimes marketed as like Hunger Games in space and I am now at that part, at the Hunger Games-esque part of the book. And it is wild, it is ruthless, it is really, really grim. There's this whole sense of just like despair and you have no clue how Darrow is going to proceed. He's having to make some really, really tough moral decisions and we're just seeing so much character growth from him, which is like, it just goes back to so much is happening in this book already. What the hell is gonna happen in the rest of the series? Because I'm literally, I'm stressed, but like in the best way, like I'm loving it, but this is just a wild, wild book and I'm scared for Darrow. Like I don't, I just, I don't know how, I don't know how this is all gonna go down and I am only halfway through book one. So needless to say, I'm having a really, really great time. I cannot believe that I put off reading this for so long. This is a book that's always been at the back of my mind. You know, those books that you're like, I need to get to that one day and now I'm here and oh, I'm just having so much fun. So very, very excited that I picked this up. I do want to try to finish this tomorrow. I think I have about 180 pages left. So um, I think that's definitely doable. And yeah, this has been really fantastic and crazy and stressful in the best way. So my plan is, as I said, I do want to try to finish Red Rising maybe tomorrow, but I totally forgot that Foxglove by Adeline Grace came out today, which is the sequel to Belladonna. It's a YA fantasy romance that I read last year. I guess like YA fantasy romance, it's more like a YA paranormal murder mystery romance, but that book I read last year and I loved it. And Foxglove came out today, which I don't know why, I just totally spaced that. So I kind of want to go pick that up and then maybe read that as well. I have been only reading one book at a time for the last several months, and I'm kind of thinking of dabbling with the idea of picking up a second book while I'm reading Red Rising. So I think I'm gonna test that out with uh, Foxglove just because I feel like those books are different enough and Red Rising is just like dark and has this overall layer of, as I said, grim and just despair and God, it's just, it's it's a rough time. And so I feel like reading Foxglove could be fun and a little bit more lighthearted. And I'm curious to see what Adeline Grace is going to do with this series. So I think I'm gonna go pick that up. I also did order the entirety of the Red Rising trilogy and just the whole saga, but the second book, Golden Sun, was not available online for me. So I think I might pick that up as well. So if I go to Barnes tonight, because I do want to get the Barnes Noble exclusive edition of Foxglove. I might see if they have the sequel to this because I'm I'm gonna keep reading this series here pretty soon. I definitely think I will read the second book in September because I just know that this is gonna be a new favorite, new obsession, new hyperfixation. I'm really excited about it. I think I'm going to go to Barnes. I'm gonna get my packages and yeah, we're gonna have a grand time. So I'll probably start Foxglove tonight as well. Read a little bit of Red Rising, little of this, little of that. She is a multitasker and yeah, I'll probably talk to you guys tomorrow. I'll give you guys an update on Red Rising and also if I decide to start Foxglove glove. I will let you know how that goes as well.
Friday. So I have very exciting updates for you all. I have finished a book and I am about 40% of the way through another feeling very good things about both. So let's get straight into it. Number one, I did finish this morning, Red Rising by Pierce Brown. This was absolutely incredible. Oh my God, when I picked the book up, I just got like a whiff of the smell of the book. Oh my God, it smells so good. Wow. Anyway, this was incredible. This was such a fun ride straight from the beginning. I instantly connected to Pierce Brown's writing style. I loved the plot. We went on such a journey in this book alone. I talked about that a little bit in my last check-in. So much happened in this book. And along with that, you know, very heavy plot, a lot of things happening and moving, we saw a lot of character development with Darrow, which I really liked. I thought it was super fascinating. My favorite part of this book was the kind of like, political power play that was going on psychologically between all of the different people in the Institute that Daryl was, you know, fighting against and teaming up with and people switching sides, people being double agents, all these things. It was really hard to tell who to trust, who to root for. And I really liked that. I was endlessly entertained. And the ending, okay, I like knew that that was gonna happen, but just the fact that it happened, like, dead. No words. I cannot wait to pick up the second book. I'm so, so happy I picked this up. I've had so many people tell me to start the series and I put it off for so long. Don't know what I've been doing, but I am a Red Rising girly. I will say though, when I finished this book, I immediately went to Goodreads uh, because nothing gives me more serotonin than hitting that I finished the book button on Goodreads. And when I went to go rate this book, I immediately first put five stars, but I do think maybe this could be a four and a half star read. And like, I'm splitting hairs here, but the only thing that I have to say about this book that, and this isn't even like a critique necessarily, I don't really know, but there was a lot of obviously like action scenes and the whole Hunger Games element of this book, right? Really intense, really fantastic. I truly, truly enjoyed it. But I feel like maybe we could have done without one or two chapters of those action sequences. And this is more a personal thing. I don't think that this is kind of a critique of the whole book. I wouldn't tell people to stay away because of this or anything like that. But I don't know if it hits that like perfect five star read for me because of just, you know, I was like, I feel like we could have taken a few of these, you know, action sequences out and maybe the pacing would have been just like perfect for me. So that's really like the only thing I have to say. So I did put in my review four and a half stars. So I guess I'm rating this four and a half stars. I feel like on a different day, I would just give it five stars, be good with it and whatever. Maybe I have like one or two nitpicky things, but Overall, I absolutely loved this book. It is a super, super strong read for me. I feel like I have a new series to obsess over and I'm so excited about that. I love series so much and just starting the first book in a series and being so impressed by it, it's the best feeling. Honestly, as a reader, like that is just such a wonderful feeling for me. So overall, I had a really, really amazing time with Red Rising. All right, and then I started Foxglove by Adeline Grace. So I am, let's see. I am on page 170. So as I said, I think I'm like 40% of the way through this book. This is the second book in a series. So I'm not gonna get like too, too into plot and things that are going on. We do have another kind of murder mystery plot line, which we also had in the first book, but I'm a sucker for a murder mystery. Give it to me anytime, any genre. I absolutely love it. And I also just think that the writing is really, really strong. And also just the imagery. This is very Gothic. The writing does really paint a picture and I really enjoy it. So that's kind of all I have to say. I'm just, I'm really liking this. So I'm I'm going to continue to read this throughout the rest of the day. This weekend, we are very, very busy, but I hopefully will get some reading done, you know, here and there throughout the weekend and then finish up this book soon and then start another one to complete this vlog. I think I'm just gonna read like three books for the vlog and then call it good. So I don't know what I'm gonna read next, but I will let you know once I have finished Belladonna and once I've started something else. Hi friends. So it is a, a few days later. I do think though, I haven't edited this vlog yet, but I do think there's a clip somewhere in this vlog where I'm sitting in the same spot and potentially wearing the same shirt. Love that. But I wanted to talk to y'all because I have had some very exciting reading updates, making progress throughout my week. And I did start the last book for this weekly reading vlog. So let's first talk about the last book that I checked in with you all about, which was Foxglove by Adeline Grace. I did finish this last night. I'm 
not obsessed with it. I was obsessed with Belladonna. I think it's a really strong YA paranormal fantasy romance. Really, really good. Really, really fun. And when I started this book, I was really excited to get back with these characters. I love Adeline Grace's writing. I still think like that is such a strong part of this book. That does not change at all. And it was exciting, you know, to get back into this world and with these characters. However, as the book progressed, I was left a little bit underwhelmed. Kind of my biggest issues were number one, death takes quite the backseat in this book. He is not the shining star that he was in Belladonna. And I love death. I want death all the time. He is such a great character. His and Cygnus dynamic is really fascinating. And while he is present, he just wasn't at the forefront. He wasn't the star of the show. And I really wanted him to be the star of the show in his and Cygnus dynamic. That is what draws me to Belladonna in this, you know, series in general. And so we saw pieces of that, obviously, but it was not nearly at the level that it was in the first book. And I personally was a little bit disappointed by that. The series is going in a direction. I don't necessarily know how I feel about that. We'll see how the third and final book is. And maybe I will be eating my words in the future, but I was just kind of disappointed by not seeing death as much and him not playing as big of a role in the plot entirely. And then the second thing, I don't want to get into spoilers, but we do meet a new character in this book and his name is Fate. I am not like a fan, you know, and I'm seeing, I'm seeing the writing on the wall. I'm seeing the way that things are going for the finale. If you've read this book, you can probably kind of guess what I'm saying. And like, I just don't know if I'm that intrigued by that storyline. What I think this series started out as was very strong to me and very interesting to me. Where it is going now, I'm just not as in love with this book compared to the first one. I am absolutely though going to continue this series. The last book is Wisteria and it's gonna be out probably next summer. And I'll definitely read that. And like, I still think, you know, the writing is really pretty. I love the gothic vibe. I do like the characters. I'm just a little bit disappointed with the way that things are going. I give this a three and a half star rating, but I do like this book. I'm not like feeling super negative feelings. I'm just kind of like, oh, okay. Like, I guess this is what we're doing. All right. I'm here for it kind of, but I do wish that things, you know, kind of stayed more Cigna and death centered. So that is kind of my thoughts on Fox Glove. All right. And then the final book that I am reading for this week's reading vlog is going to be Jade War. This is no stranger to my monthly TBRs, you guys. I have been meaning to pick this up for a while. I've just been nervous because I'm like, oh my God, what if it doesn't live up to book one? What is going to happen? There were some really, really crazy things that happened in Jade City. And I just, you know, I didn't know. I had put it off and I was like, you know what? I'm going to pick that up when I'm ready. I am ready now and I am so, so happy to be back in this world. Oh my god, I love Fonda Lee's writing so much and I love the way that she does characters. We have about five or six POVs in this book and every single one is gripping to me. Everyone is so different and so interesting. We get to see the POVs of all these different characters, some within the same family, some within the same kind of like mafia clan that they're working in, and then kind of a few of the villains. I feel like there can kind of be a balancing act when you have a lot of POVs, you know, five or six POVs. That can kind of be difficult to keep the entertainment level going in all of them. But I feel like every single time we get to a new chapter with a different POV, I am learning so much about these characters and it's just a really well-balanced, plot-heavy, but also character-driven story. I don't know, it just, it really works for me. I'm really loving it. I can't go obviously too much into like what is happening in this book. There is obviously dealing with a lot of aftermath that happened at the end of Jade City and all of these characters, they're just so like, oh my God, I love them. There's bits of humor in the book. There is a lot of like family drama, which I find really interesting. And then obviously like the political things that are going on between the No Peak and the Mountain Clans. It just really works for me. I'm kind of just going to keep it there. I'm enjoying myself. I'm absolutely loving the different POVs. I love Shay. I love Hilo. Andin, sweet baby Andin. I, yeah, there's just a lot of feelings happening. I'm excited to see where things go. I like seeing their development. I feel like a lot of development has happened. Fonda Lee can write a character arc. That is all I'm gonna say for now. I'm still like very early on in the book anyway. There is a lot to happen and I'm sure a lot of my heart to be broken as I go on. So I will check in with you guys in a little bit once I'm a little farther into this book. Hi friends, how's it going? I wanted to talk to you all because I am just sitting here with Ivy. We are reading Jade War and we just got to talk about Hilo for a second. I, I feel like it's necessary. I feel like this man, you know, demands to be talked about. I love him. He is one of my favorite characters in this entire series. In this book, he has been really, really interesting because he's just in a totally different place than he was in book one. He's so unhinged. <laughs> like he, his behavior, I just, he's very multifaceted, which is great. I think he's such a well-written character and he just makes me feel so many things where I love him, I think he's funny, I like following his POV, but then he'll do something just so like, 
he just, he stresses me out. I just read a scene where he did something that shocked me, genuinely shocked me, jaw on the floor in the other room. It was totally unexpected to me. And he just like goes about his day after that. And I'm just like, what are we doing? Kilo, like, what are we doing? I don't know if that's gonna have repercussions for him. He's just one of those act first, think later type of people. It might not have any repercussions on him though, honestly, just because like, that's just kind of how things roll in this book sometimes. But I just wanted to say this, that like Hilo, he's just a silly goose, honestly, in a very intense way at times. Yeah, I just was absolutely shocked that that happened. And I'm so curious to see kind of how that is going to be moving forward. I just find him to be like, unhinged in a very good way, in a very entertaining way. But I'm also like, oh my God, I can't believe he did that. Also, I wanted to say his wife, Wynn, I love her so much. Her little storyline, I'm obsessed. She is such a badass and so casual, so casual. Like you do not expect this behavior from her, but she's so, you know, I, I don't want to say what it is, but she's so cool. Like, I just love all these little things that she's doing behind the scenes. I think it's really, really awesome. I just, yeah, I really like her POV as well. This book is amazing. I was really worried to pick up book two, wondering if it would live up to book one, but I'm loving it. There's so much happening. We're constantly switching POVs. We're constantly switching locations. There's so much drama, the family drama, the relationship drama. Oh my God. The like political things that happen between all of them and the the other clans like it's just uh, it's so good and then the violence oh my god it's just yeah I I absolutely love I absolutely love this book I'm having a really good time I'm only on like page 200 by the way I'm not even that much farther than I was last time I talked to you all I just wanted to check in to say I'm really enjoying this I'm having a great time Hilo is um on his worst behavior as some might say and when is my idol she is my icon I love her to death and they both stress me out in a really good way. So that is gonna be my check-in for now. I will talk to you all when I'm a little bit farther or after I finished. Are we joking? Are we, are we real? Fondly, are we real? Did we really do that? Once again, Fondly decides to stomp all over my heart and my brain at the same time. Very talented. Yeah. That's my review. This was insane, as expected. It went in so many different directions that I could not see coming. The ruthlessness that was in Jade City was in this book, even more so, I feel like arguably. The secrets, the drama, the action, the warring clans, the little love stories, perfection. I'm so excited and scared for book three and the finale. Oh my God, I'm gonna be reading the last book in this series. I have to read that next month. I have to. This was fantastic. This is a five-star read. I loved this so much. I truly think once I finish Jade Legacy, as long as that goes well, that this will be one of my all-time favorite series. I just have never read anything like this. Of all the series that I love, for all the different reasons that I love them, this is a series that really stands out because it's just doing something that not a lot of series really give me. And there is just so much to dig into with this book, with this world, with these characters. So much happening, such a rich world, such a rich kind of political system. The family dynamics are really interesting. They're really good and they're really bad. There's a lot of moral grayness in this book. Oh my God, some of these characters, like you love them and then you're like, why did you do that? I almost, I think I liked this better than book one. It was perfect, honestly. Like I have I have no notes. I have absolutely nothing to complain about. The pacing was great. It's a really long book, but every single chapter I was here for, I was excited about all the POVs. <sighs> the epilogue was concerning. And yeah, this is a five star read for me. I'm so glad you guys, oh my God, my last uh, book of the month is a five star. That's so exciting. I can't believe I put it off so long. Why do I do this? I had such a good week of reading, I feel like, for the most part. Like, I started Red Rising, beautiful, stunning, amazing, perfect. I had such a good time, and I'm so excited to keep reading that series. Oh my god. I read Foxglove. Cute. Fine. 
disappointing. Slightly, slightly. Disappointing is a strong word. Underwhelmed, we'll go with that. And then I read Jane Moore and this was so good. This is a mind blowing book. This is definitely my like favorite book that I read this week. It was so, so good and whew, man. What a time. Okay, so that is going to be it for the vlog. If you made it to this point in the video and you wanted to let me know, go ahead and leave the Saturn emoji. And please make sure that you're following me on Instagram and Goodreads. They are always linked down below. I really appreciate that you watched this video. I hope that you were all having a fantastic day. I love you guys so, so much. I will catch you guys in the next one. Okay, bye.